Hello, I'm Dan. I'm Simon. And this is the Wikicast, a podcast where Wikipedia takes us to a random article each week and we talk about what we find. Simon, what are we talking about this week? This week, Dan, we're talking about Gary S. May. Right. Anything else there? It's actually, yeah, there's quite we... a lot to talk about here. Okay, right. A field. What's it, what's, why, why is he on Wikipedia? Uh, he is the Dean of Georgia Tech College of Engineering. Right. Uh, and from 2005 to 2011, as I'm sure you're aware, uh, he was the Steve W. Chaddick School Chair of the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Oh, right. At Georgia Tech. So yeah, I, could, nice. I could see you were going to jump yeah. in then yeah. and, and complete <laughs> uh, that The only one. reason I was going to jump in is because you said he is the Dean, and I got really excited. I was like, of which cathedral? And then you're like, no, no, no. <laughs> Because the Americans have that, you know. Coral scholarship, yet again, yeah. raising its head. Mm-hmm. To be fair, the Dean at Exeter Cathedral is one of our favourite people. Absolute lad. Uh, not least man. because we had a lovely um, uh, New Year's. And we did, yeah. Us over. We're, uh, not how many seconds are we even in? We're 45 seconds in and we're <laughs> already off music. Yeah. Uh, right, let, let's talk a little bit about Gary S. May before we at least, you know, let, let's give him proper service before we go completely off topic. Okay. Um, I will, there's a picture of him. He is a lovely smiling man uh, in a grey suit. Which, actually, it's quite a nice suit. I've got to say, like, I'd, it, uh, what do you look for? Oh, no, I was going to say, what do you look for in a suit? And then I realised we're completely off topic again. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, you just, you know that if you ask me that question, I'll be talking for way too long. Yeah. Like, Dan is a, a fop and a dandy. I'm a fop and a dandy. <laughs> a metrosexual through and through. <laughs> what was it? Okay, well, the fact that you were watching Mamma Mia yesterday. Oh, uh, glorious. And you, you were coming in with just the fact that, like, I really want a pair of dungarees. Yeah. I do want a pair of dungarees. Pan. I think I just... I, you I, also want Julie Walters, and I take issue with both of these things. Yeah, I want them equally as much. In fact, I might want Julie Walters just a little bit more. But one without the other is the other thing. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, yeah, we. Uh, I came back last night, um, and Dan was having some friends over, and all musical theatre people, hmm. and I, I left for a run, came back, and you were watching Mamma Mia. Yeah. Uh, it, was... it was a brilliant afternoon, actually. So we had some people, um, for those of you that don't know, on top of the kind of the choiry things that I do, other than singing, um, I conduct a couple of choirs on campus. Uh, I'm also the co-MD for the Gilbert and Sullivan Society. That's so we the had... musical director, for those mm. of you not in the know. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, so I, I, I cooked dinner. We had a nice, lovely, I did a roast pork loin. Cause, yeah, because apparently Exeter doesn't have lamb anywhere. It was completely out, no lamb in... Devon. It Which is weird because mental. Devon was historically the wool-growing capital of mm. the South. Yeah. And there are sheep everywhere. You literally see sheep everywhere. You see sheep everywhere. You see everywhere. sheep everywhere. <laughs> she's sure. Sorry, my mouth that's, was just glued uh, shut then. That's one nil for me, I think you'll find. <laughs> Chalk that one up. Sorry, yeah. we've already gone off topic again. Um, right, let, let, let me at least go through his biography. Okay. Um, he's got a PhD. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, what a, what a lad. Yeah. Um, he has a PhD that you got in 1991. Wow. Which was the year after I was born, um, in electrical engineering and computer science. I went to, to um, Berkeley in oh, right. California, which yeah, is yeah. one of the places for science. Mm. Um, very nice place as well, actually. I, <laughs> That's I went the, uh, the official slogan they have on all their billboards. Berkeley, one of, one the, of the places, places for, for science. science. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you need to have it punchy. You can't say, oh, you know, this is the International Centre for Quantum Information. You mm-hmm. know, like it, the, the, there is that in Oxford and it's like... Now, this is the science building. It's like, yeah. I, I harken back to the simpler times, like when in school you would have the maths building and the science building, yeah. not the nanotechnology suite. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the, the quantum information center. Oh, mental. So he, um, let's have a look. Uh, oh, actually, yes, this is something we can talk about. Um, just realized something that's literally staring me in the face. I'll be honest, the rest of his um, article isn't interesting me at all it's relatively short mm. um oh he's about to become the chancellor in oh like three weeks in chancellor August, of of the university exchequer? of california oh, davis right. okay. no that's a bansler yeah, yeah. yeah. um yeah august 1st he's gonna become chancellor at the university of california davis oh congrats mr dean i have already forgotten his name congrats gary uh the s stands for stephen may gary the s yes, stands for is, he a, is he a wrestler <laughs> <laughs> Weighing in at 579 pounds, what? Gary, the S how, stands for... He's how, huge. He's, he's huge. morbidly obese. I mean, I'm the one looking at his picture. He looks quite in shape, actually. Does he? I mean, for 53, he's cutting quite a dashing figure. Really? Um, you know, the suit helps. Okay. But, um, what I was going to say um, mm. is that uh, he, he's black and he's from Georgia, yeah. which is exactly the combination that relates to a book that I just finished. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a segue. Uh-huh. That's a really good segue. Um, called The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. Mm. See, um, I've not read it. I've heard a lot about it. 
But yeah. And well, now we've got the book in the house and you finished it. I definitely want to read it. I mean, I devoured it in like three days. Mm. It was, um, it's the f- I think it's probably the first book about slavery explicitly that I've read. Mm. I don't know about you. I mean, like stuff like Of Mice and Men has themes about it. It's, um, oh, what's the name of it? Crook. Is it Crook, the character? I don't think his name's Crook. I know he's got like a dodgy back, isn't it? Doesn't he? But I don't yeah. think his name's Crook. Crookshanks. Crook I think Shanks. that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. he was a cat. He was he yeah. was the black cat that's on the um, on the farm. But yeah, I don't think I've read um, a book about slavery before. And I, I'd left a review about this on my Goodreads. But um, it's a really strange feeling reading the, a book like that mm. as a white dude, because I know it's ridiculous to say this, but you you can't help but feel almost like you're personally responsible mm. for some of the stuff that happened. What was uh, the name? Crooks. It was, I was it nearly was right. Yeah, Actually, yeah. Crookshanks. It's, it's mm. like short for Crookshanks. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the black stable hand uh, and gets his name from his crooked back. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, like it, it's it's strange. The, the, the way they I kind of put it on my Goodreads is it's like you're consolidating the fact that you're a passive antagonist mm. in the context of this book. Like if we were honestly to live our lives as we do now 200 years ago, mm. well, actually if we were to do that, we'd be like technological gods. Yeah. It'd be amazing. <laughs> um, but if we were to live within we would be the means of this podcast time, for one. Yeah, we would. It, we, we would just gather on a platform at the edge of a street and with two armchairs mm. and just flick open an encyclopedia to a random page and be like, we're talking about the slavery plantations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, you go, oh, jolly good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, God, would not be good, would it? I um, was thinking either that, either if we weren't in armchairs, we'd have to do something like everything we say was notated in shorthand and then it would be sent across the country by like carry, carry a pigeon. Carry pigeon. Carry pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, one all. That's Mr. Right? Carry pigeon. Yeah. <laughs> Carry hope pigeon. Yeah, yeah. But you know, if we were to live our lives as we did do now, then mm. would we honestly be ardent abolitionists, knowing? Well, because we, well, the other thing is, I suppose, would we know the details of what slavery was like? Mm. But if we did, would we honestly really campaign for its abolition? I like to think that I would, but given if you have a cozy life, you're mm. so isolated from it. Mm. Now, then it made me realise that um, modern slavery still exists. Oh, yeah. You know, millions of people around the world. And so you kind of reflect on the fact that, yeah, I am basically enabling mm. by going to Primark, uh, Primani, sorry, mm. um, buying uh, really cheap clothing that was made by slaves. Mm. You're kind of buying into that system. Yeah. I suppose that's one of the, it must be one of the kind of the book's primary um, success kind of stories, I like, if you like. Um, in that you can be reading something of an era. Like, you know, what what was the dates of the book that you've been reading? Uh, it's right next to me on the shelf. Hang on, if I can get some ASMR in here, if I just... Uh... Oh, there we go. Yes, please. Uh, when, when was it set? Uh, actually, I don't know if it has a specific year. There are um, adverts placed through it. Okay. Um, which are real adverts mm. um, about because the idea is it's about these two slaves called Cora and Caesar who run away from a horrific plantation. Mm. Um, and... Obviously, it's it's fiction, but it's um, grounded in truth. Yeah. Uh, and so there are adverts from it. The one... It's before the Civil War. I think it'd be fair to say, like, 1820s. Okay. Um, I can actually... There's... there's To give you an example, actually. Mm. Um, so one, one of the... One of the... Yes. A, a brief exclusive... It's not exclusive. Extract. <laughs> yeah. um, one of the characters is a slave catcher, um, mm. and which is sort of a horrible thing in itself. Um, and these people really existed and responded to adverts like uh, $30 reward, ran away from the subscriber, living in Salisbury on the fifth instant, which I guess means the fifth of the month. I suppose. Something, yeah, something like that. Uh, a Negro girl the f- wait, by the name again. of the Lizzie. Fifth what? The fifth instant. So not instance, but instant. Yeah, I guess that would be like a date. Hmm. Um, whilst you're doing that, uh, a Negro girl by the name of Lizzie. It is supposed that said girl is in the vicinity of Mrs. Steele's plantation. I will give the above reward on delivery of the girl or for information on her being lodged in any jail, spelt G-A-O-L, in this state. All persons are forewarned of harbouring said girl under penalty of law prescribed. W.M. Dixon, July 18th, 1820. Okay. So it's as if your property had been taken from you mm. and somebody wanted it back. Yeah. Um, it's incredibly, de- you know, well, de- humanising. I suppose you know, the, the, the really tenuous point that I was trying to make and thoroughly didn't um, was <laughs> that you can be reading something so of an era and it still brings up themes that are completely applicable today. Like you can be reading yeah. that and you can kind of rationalise it and put it into a context that you can understand. In- and also it helps, it gives us a window onto, because, you know, we're British, uh, the slave trade doesn't have such an impact on our society 
it'd be fair to say, certainly compared to America mm. uh, now. Whereas for Americans, it's still a huge part of society because there are still huge racial divides. Yeah. Um, even if not in law, like the fact that uh, black people were what three fifths of a person, which again is mm. just like Mental. disgusting. Yeah. Um, but you know, even though people are in theory equal, there's no way that it, you know white people and black people in America have the same economic and social situation. Mm. This is taking a very serious turn. Yeah, it's actually really strange. I was reading an article this morning on. I think it actually. I was reading it, and then there was a video that went along with it in the Guardian. Um, again, Ed Lage Dan striking <laughs> through there over my cup of tea this morning. Um, was it this morning? Did you wake up this morning? I did technically wake up this morning. <laughs> was I functioning this morning? No, not at well, all. Well, given that I came back home at about four to record this podcast, and I was making noise in the kitchen, and you were like, hello? <laughs> was, well, and then you got out of bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, normally when I come into the house, I'll I'll do my... So you the, no, the way that you know that I'm home is because I will go... And that's kind of my announcing my presence. Yeah, it's like um, the Starship Enterprise. Yeah, just in case, like, you know, just to... I'm in the middle of something. Yeah, if you're busy or it's... I think it's quite nice to know that the person that you expect to be downstairs is downstairs rather than I'm in my room and I just hear a lot of shuffling and clanging about and I don't know it's you. And I'm <laughs> it like, could be the tin man. I suddenly start thinking, did I, you know, did I did I lock the door? Oh my God, what if someone's coming in? They're, the hummus! They're taking the hummus from the fridge! Um, yeah, I got a bit, I got a bit scared. What was the point of this? What oh, you had your tea this morning. Yeah. You, you read oh, the Guardian. Oh, yeah, the article. Diane Abbott yeah. um, was talking about um, kind of racism. Oh, race, yeah, some of the stuff racism. she's been sent. Racism, yeah. racism indeed. Racism, yes, yeah. uh, in, uh, that, in That she's kind of faced in her kind of as a political fig- figurehead, if you like. Um, mm. It was really interesting. And like, yeah. she was talking about how when a load of people come and work for her, the thing they're most struck by is just the despicable truly despicable and horrid uh language that um that she gets kind of i mean with. there was there was a video on twitter today of her reading some of the emails out that's I mean, the one yeah they're it not, one from uh, the not worth repeating in any way i feel no. like the language of that is almost acceptable because it's from a, a period mm. or it's describing a period whereas people actually tweeting these things to somebody in 2017 just boggles the mind foul and loathsome what it is. i just don't understand how people can look at another person that way mm. i mean judge someone on their character if you don't like their politics or how they sing perhaps yeah i suppose the way they rationalize it is that they're not they don't think they are looking at another person when you think I, of, you know, I, I, like in a way i hope that's right but i feel like nowadays people do recognize them as a person but say they are worth less because of the color of their skin yeah um whereas ugh. This, we went very, very yeah, serious all very of a sudden. South. What's we, happened? Very south. I mean, we are in Georgia, dear. Uh, so that's the Eastern European public of Georgia. Yeah, uh, that's really, how they talk there. Really great. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> so he's so always a relative of Dracula, apparently. <laughs> what? Is Transylvania near Georgia? Um, I don't know what happened to my voice trans- there. Tra- I don't know if you heard uh, that. Um, let me do that again. Um, there we go. Oh, that I was very, nice. very, very m- melodic. Mm, pure. Yeah. <laughs> Angelic, if you will. Uh, at least something about you is today. How hungover are you, Dan? Uh, on a scale of one to ten, probably cruising at a nice eleven. Yeah, you're going. you're really quite hanging today. I am. Yeah, it's not good. I decided when we were having, uh, I made this lovely meal. If I do say so myself, I fecking nailed it. Uh, <laughs> no censorship needed then. That was that was an it e. was fecking. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. Um, it's a real word. Yeah, uh, I was making for anyone who kind of doesn't know, like for you, I guess, um, because you're a vegetarian. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, pork can offer a some kind of hardships in its cooking because if you kind of if you butcher if you butcher <laughs> oh come on um, if you butcher the uh, the cooking of it the crackling you get on the top make a pig's ear of it yeah very nice okay. oh that was very good um, uh, if it's too hard or too soft and chewy it's just a bit crap um, but uh, I nailed it things were going so well that I decided to instead of open one bottle of wine I opened two. Um, yeah, you, I literally had a message on my phone saying two bottles was a mistake. Yeah, yeah. I woke <laughs> up this morning and I thought I'd got away with it. Um, and was uh, that your phone again? Yeah, is that it was. two podcasts? It, was my... I, it wasn't audible last time. It was no. This is quite good. So you know how I sent you when I when I came downstairs and I said that I was going to do the washing up and I didn't. And I, I and I quote verbatim. In my defence, mate, I was going to set an alarm for four thirty in the afternoon, so I had time to clean it before you got home. That was the alarm going off. It just said, "Do the washing up before Simon gets back." <laughs> That didn't happen. You you, yeah, because you left your phone in the the bathroom mm. uh, last night, and I was so close. I didn't I didn't want to wake you. I was trying to be a nice housemate. I was so close to. You I don't know think how... you could have woken me. I was 
you were out. Pretty deep. Oh, yeah. damn it. Well, so um, for those of you who own an iPhone will know on Siri, you can get it to call you a nickname. Mm. And I was so tempted to say, hey, Siri, uh, change my nickname to... Oh, you've just picked it. It's just picked it up. Did it just pick it yeah, up? Yeah, it did. That's being, that's being censored, right, by the way. So There's no way that's getting out. No, I don't think so. I'm going to... <laughs> but uh... I was waiting for that to crop up in a social situation. Like, you'll trigger it and be like, hey, Siri, and be like, hey... <laughs> Oh, God. Well, you do this. You've got such a bad habit of if we're out in a public place, you'll just ask Siri to search for child awful porn. things. Like, <laughs> Hey, Siri, search for child porn. <laughs> I've turned it off now. We're not doing it. Um, oh, but back to the, uh, uh, Transylvania. Yeah, the, yeah, that was where we were. Yeah. Um, How did you get onto pork from there? I have, God, I have no idea. I mean, is, is it really kind of a, worth us trying to follow our tangents? It doesn't sound like a kosher to, to me. our tangents, if you will. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm going. Um, in yep. a, histor- a historical region located in what today is the central part of Romania. And the, and Romania is nowhere near Georgia. No. So in well, I mean, it's question. in the same rough part of the world. Like, it's in Eastern Europe slash Eurasia. Yeah. But uh, you're pushing it by yeah, that point. Yeah, you really are pushing it. <laughs> like, it's not really very close, is it? I mean... Same part of the world. Well, I mean, it's not in, like, South America. No. It's, it's within a thousand miles, probably. <laughs> okay we'll take small victories Why i mean not? i deal with like stuff when i with my research i look at hemisphere scale stuff if something was in a thousand miles it's like oh it's pretty close yeah you know i'll take i'll take that yeah if if i make a prediction of something happening and it's only a thousand miles away i'll probably be like ah it's it's fine that difference pretty good yeah yeah you know that's a pause i'll trim yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're sitting there like well well then well, okay. we've we've we, so we've we, gone we, from we're now at Tran- we're now in Transylvania. We are. My yeah. God, that was fast. Yeah. Um. But we've come from a dark. dean of. Can you hear? I can hear bats. I think. Yeah. Oh God! There's there's a man standing in the garden with a blood dripping from his teeth, and he's. he's I was really wearing a very nice then, cloak. I was really tempted then to try and make bat sound effects, and I was like, "What noises do bats make?" Yeah, I don't know. Um. Just I guess like, they just screech, don't yeah. they? <laughs> kind of sound yeah i mean that sounds more like a pig far away yeah far, far a, a pig far away <laughs> yeah it's spot on uh yeah i don't know what about i mean i suppose it's all uh sonar isn't it uh well yeah a lot of the stuff so that the very, noises very they make frequency. as from record locations we we can't hear because it's beyond our range although kids i think can hear it like i definitely really? remember being younger and being yeah because kids um Hearing range is higher than adults because the bones in your ear and like the it, the eardrum is shorter and the bones are smaller, mm. so you can pick up high frequency. High frequency, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, you've learned actually something. Mm. You you have. Le- I've been whilst we've been talking, I've been trying to look up. Uh, having said the um, making a pig's ear of it, mm. um, it's. A, a phrase that I remember that had a, a really interesting etymology, and I'm trying to find it. Etymology is like a personal a love. Oh yeah, absolutely it is good. love it. Um, in fact, well, I remember once mum, um, this would have been in like 2003, mum asked for Christmas, or well, she didn't ask, she said that she'd like an etymological dictionary. So if just to put it into perspective of our age gap there, 2003, I'm fairly sure I would have been six. Yeah, I would have been oh, 13. Oh my God. Uh, you old, old man. Old, twisted old man. <laughs> um, but yeah, she asked for this and I'm, I'm very glad I didn't buy it in the end because... Mm. You know, Wikipedia is a thing now. Yeah. If, you're ever, if you're ever curious, you don't have to look through, which I kind of miss. Yeah. Did you have um, the collection of, you know, like my the my first encyclopedias? Uh, Do you remember those? Which was the publishing house that did them? They were really famous. Was it Doyne Kindersley? I don't think so. They they, 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 Do you remember those ones? There was a great one they did on dinosaurs. I remember. Uh. I'm trying to remember. They had is it was it DK? Mm, Darling Kinsley. Oh, that yeah, yeah. The <laughs> yeah. one I just said. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's that's like those many times. In fact, just whilst we were getting ready for the podcast, we were like, oh, sorry, can you say that again, mate? I wasn't listening. <laughs> yeah. They, I just remember being. They used to be on the um the bottom shelf, and they were really satisfyingly. The, they were, the the spines were bound in such a way that you got like a nice design. Throughout. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Set them up. They look really good. It, that well okay, right? This is a personal gripe that I've held for many years, and I've never ever aired. Right. Is it your relationship with cushions? No. Okay. But they can do one, as you know. Maybe this <laughs> yeah. is, if we ever get to, like, the, I don't know, the Ottoman Empire, I'll be like, this is an opportunity <laughs> to get my platform out there. <laughs> no, tell you what really grinds my gears is, sorry, Gary S. May, um, is the DVD spines of the Lord of the Rings standard editions. Right. Because do we have them here? Yeah, we do. Right. Cut, it, it, this, if, viewer, oh, imagine if you have them on. on your shelf nearby, mm. um, you will see that 
they're nearly a, f- a consistent set. Mm. They're actually slightly obscure. Dan can make them up better than I can. Yeah. Um, but it's the fact that like the the age rating logo consistently slides down. Not only does it spine. slide down, but they also change from circles to triangles. Uh, well, or that's because the Fellowship of the Ring is Fellowship a... is PG. Yeah, yeah. But I can I can forgive that. But can also, you? well, okay. yeah, because you know sure it's, it's, it's different rate. It's the film can't help the rating it has to put yeah, it on the could, spine. Yeah, but they could also just make sure that instead of putting the PG in a triangle, they put it in a circle. Oh, so, so well, that's that's not an issue else. with the DVD designers. That's an issue with the. Uh, What's the name of the body that does rate? Is it, is it EBRSM or something like that? EBRSM? No, that's that's that. music. That's music. It? Oh god! Again, music makes. I think you're way... thinking of. Isn't it done by the BFI? Uh, hang on. Film ratings UK. This is what this podcast is about. Yeah. <laughs> Going down the wiki rabbit hole. Uh, C C B B F C. Oh the, yeah, the, yeah. Or the uh, the centre for. Go on. Fill it in. Fill the rest of it in. <laughs> Answers on the a film rating. It's, it's the BBFC, I think. I think that might be the kids' one specifically. It's the, the BBFC is the British Board of Film Classification. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So the film can't help that. But the fact that there is and the Fellowship of the Ring, there's the DVD logo. Well, first of all, there's the studio logo, DVD logo, Frodo's head, then the the logo of the film, two towers, the same. But then the Return of the King, the studio logo. Aragorn just jumps the queue mm. and then it's the DVD logo and then the logo of the film which pushes it all down. How it's three films. Mm. You knew it's not like you didn't know what the other two look like, like you were shooting in the dark. How hard is it to make them consistent? I think you, do you wanna do you wanna have a lie down, mate? This is so really honest, a, honestly a moist flannel. This, this has really bugged me for a long time. You're very, very, you're very sweaty. What's what's <laughs> happened? This has really got to you. It's a warm day and I'm annoyed. I suppose I get like that with um books that are in a series and another a brilliant tangent um our, well, that, that's what remains to be seen our you know the, the game of thrones books that we've got here <laughs> they don't match <laughs> yeah we have to i mean i'm fairly sure they're, they're mine, no longer it's my fault yeah they're no longer on the shelf because okay they're, well, there's two things. they're serving a higher purpose there's now. uh well they're lower down than they were actually <laughs> um there's there's two things to mention there one so i have all the game of thrones books mm. and they're a lovely edition which aren't the standard ones which have like a sword a crown a wolf's head on the front they mm. are landscapes of westeros ostensibly um apart from a Clash of Kings Part 1, I think, mm. is the third book, um, which I was so impatient to read that I just bought the first edition I could find. Yeah, Heath, as an English student. Yeah. How the, I hate that. I, how I, you can feel... How can you live with yourself? I will buy a new edition. In fact, I might need to buy new editions of all of them because, um, as was going to be in the vlog, but I accidentally deleted a whole week's worth of footage. Well that, done there, mate. Yeah, that was really, really great. Done. My bed broke, uh, literally just in the middle of the night. The joints, uh, the, jo- the, the, the horizontal long bits of the bed... Hmm. Joining that to the headboard just snapped. The struts, and, if you will. Uh, well, no, the the hor- as in the bits parallel to the ground. Oh, not the ones that go across. Haven't they broken as well, though? The wooden. The... Some of the wooden ones have yeah. because I'm fat. Mm. Um, well, not as much as I was. Um, but the the weld, the, like the weld joint between the horizontal bits and the vertical bits, just snapped. Mm. So, um, in order to not lo- sleep on the floor, I have three stacks of books currently mm. uh, which are propping holding... up the bed yeah uh, so I have uh, a pillar the pillars of American fiction uh, quite literally uh, <laughs> uh, George R. R. Martin is holding up by the far right mm. John Green is holding up he's the... holding up the far right uh, the... oh well <laughs> he's not really though is he he's great he's, he's, he's as lefty as they come the sons of the harpy yeah. are on... <laughs> uh, holding up one bit John Green's holding up another bit uh, that, that corner of the bed's turtles all the way down and then the bit nearest my desk is a hodgepodge mm. of like, Gerald Durrell's in there, I think. Uh, Ian M. Banks is in there. Uh, there's a whole a whole bunch of different books at that point. Mm. But um, yeah, my uh, everything I own is falling apart, basically. Like yeah. the, the device we're using to record this uh, is a Zoom H4n, which I highly recommend. But uh, the microphone at the top, one of them is held together with sellotape. Uh, my vlogging camera, which has just been replaced, uh, the front has literally fallen off. You know how basically th- things in our house look like back in the day of kind of classic, classic Blue Peter. <laughs> when they teach you how to make things out of being like, do you have an empty milk carton and some sellotape and a piece of string and a thimble? We'll show you how to make a, you know, a like, particle accelerator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's just weird little things. I actually had a, um, uh, my he would have been my great... Either my great great or my great grandfather. I can't remember which. I think my great grandfather. Um, he used to swear by any DIY in the house that needed to be done. They lived in this really really nice, um, kind of uh, classically 
like Tudor in style cottage. It was a really, really nice house, it was a listed building, but some um, builders got hold of it and knocked it down and he's a bastard and we don't talk about him in our family. <laughs> um, but uh, the house was held up with blue tack and string. <laughs> Everything was just, you know, like doors that would, if, you know, some, some people would buy a door stop if it's a breezy day. He'd be like, no, he'll either just jam a load of blue tack into the hinge <laughs> so it can't move or just have this in- intricate kind of pulley system with string everywhere. And it was amazing. There is a definite charm to the gaffer tape, blue tack, yeah. string, you know, holding that everything together. That family of kind of home fixes. Yeah. The, 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 that says, <laughs> it's that what you ascribe to in life, well, I do, which is that, look, I know it's not perfect, but it'll do for now. Yeah, yeah. It's just, oh, it's good. Make do and mend. Keep calm. It's definitely something on. that we don't do enough of these days. Like, mm. we definitely have way too much of a consumer culture. Yeah. The fact that, um, you know, if a camera of mine breaks... Mm. Well, that's obviously somewhat different because they're, that's like plan, not plan redundancy. Is that what it's called? when um, company... Something like that. It's not like forecasted redundancy or something. Something like that. Yeah. Um, Basically how, what every major kind of tech corporation absolutely thrives on. Yeah, because it, it, it's itself, designed to break after a certain point. Has a life of about four or five years. Whereas, yeah, I'd much prefer to have a camera where something will break and then mm. I take it to a shop and like, oh, I'll install a new flangulator bob. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, oh, that's exactly what I need. Yeah, yeah brilliant. Um and, you know, then, then I can go off with it again. Because yeah. if I, I don't know about you, I definitely develop bonds with inanimate objects, like cameras, especially if you use them oh, yeah. in an artistic sense. Although I do remember as a kid, I got quite sad when we threw away one of our microwaves. We had a microwave for like five years, and yeah. I remember we took it to the dump, and I was just like, buy a microwave. <laughs> I got slightly, which is weird, because I'm a totally unemotional person now. Mm. I think I got it all out of me early on. Well, you say that, when, the, um, when your G7X... My vlogging camera. Yeah, when that started to die. That was really quite. Like now, yeah. There was a moment where we, you were planning kind of a video to just like to basically have a candlelit vigil <laughs> to say goodbye to it, and you were just there was a moment where I was sitting in in the chair just kind of looking at you, and you were holding it in your hands, and I I was trying to I was playing some Nunc Dimittis to basically try and to <laughs> some, find some music that fit the scene, and you were properly getting a little bit teary, and I was I suddenly kind of stopped and just turned the music off. I was like, this is I'm just being cruel <laughs> this is now. Too much. <laughs> this is like yeah, it's a bit heavy. What was my favourite mo- one of those moments was when Icarus. Crash saw too high, uh, and uh, our friend Michael, mm. who is our musical director uh, at the Chapel Choir, and is a v- very much a non-emotional person. He's very business-like, no real time for for emotions, and it means he's very good at what he does. Mm. But he could see; he knows me very well. He could see how much that had cut me up. Yeah, the fact yeah. I was like hold. It was like I was like one of the farmers in um, Game of Thrones that kid had been burnt by the dragon. Mm. I was taking it to Daenerys, or to bring it back to um, of mice and men. You were like... I was holding Curly's wife. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I was thinking I was less going to go for kind of like murder and more being oh. like a rabbit, perhaps, rather than oh, a human like a person. Lenny with a mush yeah, rabbit. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just owl, wanted owl, to rabbit, George. It's <laughs> a great film. Um, I was holding it like the, the wreckage in my hands. And mm. he was like, you could see that he'd like, he tapped me on the shoulder and was like, it's going to be all right. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then it, that was like, that was your allotted ration of emotional pity. It yeah. Like, right, right, let's crack on. Yeah, yeah. We've got a concert to do. <laughs> yeah. Need you on top form. I'm so I'm still open on Transylvania. As in that you're open to going there? Dan and I did have this crazy idea, by the way. Um, oh, I don't think it's a crazy idea. It's definitely not the kind of idea that you mention over cornflakes uh, no. and go, oh yes, let's do that today. Mm. Um, where we were thinking of what if we just went travelling, the two of us, mm. and we set up with a certain budget and mm. we made a video every day about where we went. Yeah. So uh, what would be a really good way of doing it is um, like interrailing. Yeah. Especially as that's that's fairly specific to Europe. Um, that's kind of like a done thing, you know. Hmm. Um, start up in, I don't know, Reykjavik <laughs> and then make our way down <laughs> well, to... Hang on, how are you proposing to get from Reykjavik to anywhere via interrailing? Uh, with difficulty, I suppose we could go through. We take the Eurotunnel to France, and then we're then we're all on the. So we're the Eurotunnel doesn't start in Iceland. No, no, but as in we'll go down. <laughs> yes, of course. All right, tone down the sass, please. We'll go from where from where we are, which is in England. I don't know if you've known this, Simon. I thought we were in uh, Transylvania. Oh, here we go. Um, no, we go down to France, and then we're on the mainland, basically right the way through. Yeah. So that could be done. So but really, it was actually quite a reasonable suggestion. It was reasonable. Oh, from, uh, why did you, you choose Reykjavik? Why did you start in Reykjavik? Because it's got the World Seed Bank. No, it doesn't. That's in Oz. That's in Norway. What am I thinking of? Reykjavik. Reykjavik's in Iceland. Yeah, Reykjavik has the World Seed Bank. No, no, no. That's in Oz. That's in not in Oslo, but it's in Norway. I'm pretty sure. I yeah. don't know. I'm pretty sure. 
All right. It's that's, Reykjavik. That's, that's, uh... Or it's something that sounds like Reykjavik. Svalbard, which is Norwegian. What? Why? Why am I thinking of Reykjavik? Then? Reykjavik has, I think, it has the World Penis Museum. Yeah, I don't think I'm thinking of that. Oh, that's a change. But it is to do with a seed bank, I suppose. Hey, Hooray, that's there good. we go. I like there that. Very good. Well, this is the only feedback we get on this podcast. It's literally being like, oh, you know, nice. Oh, one. it might. I might be thinking of. Hang on. This is an intermission. I'm yeah. just going to come in here and say, uh, if you'd like to be the first person to have your message read out on the podcast, we are looking forward to your emails at spongyandelectric at gmail dot com. Uh, we haven't had anything from you yet, so if you'd like to be the first, like everybody does on YouTube and commenting first, then do send us your message with feedback on what you think about the podcast, which zingers you think we should never, ever say again, and uh, who's winning on the score front, because I've actually lost count. It was mm. 2-1 at one point, but I think we've we've both scored a few goals and own goals by this point. So um, I know I, I'm com- still talking because Dan's still Googling. I've completely outdone myself. I have absolutely no idea why I've got Reykjavik Reck- on my brain. Reykjavik. Yeah. Um, not a clue. That's bizarre. I mean, it's a very cool place. I'd love to visit. Actually, there's a subscriber of mine. Um, I think it's David, who um, is in Iceland doing research and has invited uh, Liv and I over to... There's, like, um, various, like, wildlife sanctuaries and stuff, mm. which I'd love to go and do um, once I've handed in. Because that's basically... My life is... It's like AD and BC, but it's, like, before hand in and after hand in. Mm. Uh, Anno thesis I, in the name of our... In the, in the year of our thesis. <laughs> Because it's basically going to be like dying and coming back to life. Yeah, I'm surprised. I mean, it's not far away now, actually. No, although... it's very close. Alarmingly close. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the fact that I realised I'm probably going to be able to do like two or three more vlogs, mm. like week vlogs. Yeah. Um, as in, they're not going to be particularly week vlogs. They're going to be a vlog about a week. Yeah. Um, before hand in. Yeah. Which is really scary. Yeah, and then it will be the actual, it will be December, your actual graduation, won't it? Yeah, so, the... Um, assuming the Viva goes well, which will be like six weeks after I hand in, mm. uh, where I have to do the limit. I think they limit them now. I think it's, it's either four or four and a half hours is the maximum they can keep you now. Okay. Um, whereas before there are stories of... So for those of you that don't know, at the end of a PhD, submit your thesis, which is however long it is, 100 pages, 200 pages, and your external examiner, who's an expert in the field from another university, will come in and um, read it. And then you basically sit down with them in a room for an unspecified well up until recently an unspecified amount of time until they're satisfied that you did the research you know what you're talking about and um maybe if you need to do any extra work um extra now limits that i think it's to four or four and a half hours Mm. but there are stories of them taking literally all day and people saying or should we break for dinner uh, and then come back to this yeah which is just That's crazy. Oh, and also the fact that in my supervisor's Viva, um, he was made to go up to the blackboard and so they were, they were like, "Oh yeah, derive this equation that you're mm. using." Mm. Like, I mean, I could mm. for the ones that I'm using, but I, I really wouldn't want to. No, um, that's kind of like a worst case scenario yeah. question. In a way, it's been good that I, I went through the Oxbridge interview system because, from the sounds of things, it's very similar. They'll be like, you know, talk about why did you use this particular method? Mm. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, this is the answer. And then they say, okay, but what about, why didn't you use this one? And then what about the complexities of this one? What's the equation you use? And like, you keep pushing until you can't answer anymore. Mm. Um, which, you know, maybe that'll make the viva shorter if I get to that point faster. Whereas for me, the most stressful time around that time will be just singing at graduation and probably knowing that I won't find out the music <laughs> until about two <laughs> days prior to us singing. <laughs> because while Michael is a phenomenal musical director and very good at what he does, his organisation, um, is... yeah, it's, it's, it's sometimes it gets a little bit stressful. Yeah, like yeah. on the de- like just a couple of days ago on Facebook, someone reminded us who's not even in the choir that we had a concert on the twenty second, <laughs> and I was like, I have no, I had no idea. Oh yeah, yeah, that... yeah. Um, not, nothing it... will come close to that. Shall we tell the story of that concert we did last year? I think yeah. So just in uh, about I'd say maybe twenty five minutes out of uh, where we are in Exeter. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lovely little village called... It's probably meant to be 40 minutes, but Michael drives very quiet. Very, very quast. Very quast. Yeah. I was actually thinking of um, the train, because can, we can obviously get off at um, Woodbury. If you're lucky, yeah. Yeah, a lovely little village called Woodbury. Um, and uh, we, we sang this concert, uh, and we, we got there for, I think it was about 5.30. Uh, yeah, the concert was... was meant to be at 7, mm, 7.30. Yeah, so we had loads of time. We got there. We, we still had to kind of sort out some bits of the kind of repertoire. And what was making it harder was people were doing individual solo pieces that they just kind of they yeah brought it, was, the music it was a mixed and... program because the thing is it was the same day as graduation ball mm. so a lot of the choir we were losing a lot of people that year mm. um weren't going to be there so t- we had a bunch of i think it was about 10 of us mm. maybe um uh doing choir pieces and then yeah about 
like six people did solos. Mm. Most people did. Sorry yeah. if you can hear that helicopter, by the way. Uh, the police have found us. Oh my god, they're coming. Um, hang on, I'll just shut that window. Uh, Jesus, but, it's wow! Cool. Sounds like a fart in the that sky. Doesn't sound good. Actually, that's went... a plane, not a helicopter. Yeah, it sounded like a prop yeah. plane, didn't it? Actually, it went past the, the prison the other day, and I could hear what I'm pretty sure was a prison riot. Yeah. And being that close to the prison, I was just like, <laughs> walk a little <laughs> bit quicker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, yes. The, um, so yeah, it was a mixture of quiet. Acquire bits and solo items, which mm. we were going to sort when we arrived. Yes. And we arrived in separate cars, and that was a bit stressful anyway. Yeah, because some people weren't sure which, which church in the village we were going to, and it was yeah. all a bit of a mess. Anyway, we got there, and we went back into the um, choir vestry to kind of get ready, and they'd put on a lovely spread, um, mm. which was very, very, very kind of them. Uh, anyway, so we had some sandwiches and some, you know, some drinks and whatever. That was lovely. Then Michael came in and said, right, we're going to probably start rehearsing in the next five, ten minutes, so finish eating, and then we'll rehearse and then we'll probably you'll probably have some free time before the concert actually starts and he disappeared off we were like all right so we you know, got to the end of the sandwiches and the, the squash was nearly out um <laughs> and uh anyway michael then came back in quite quickly and told everyone to shut up and we were all still kind of like sa sandwiches half hanging out yeah, of cucumber our mouths. sandwich midway just, to the mouth yeah and he said all right everyone i just want you to um just nobody talk and listen very very carefully um can you get out all of your music and we hadn't even we hadn't agreed on which music we're going to be doing completely we, you know we, we just brought all the music we owned basically and we're going to pick from there yeah and he said right here's the plan you're going to go out with all of your music well, you're not going to have it in any order because i don't know what the order is yet i am going to make up something about the music and basically buy time which gives you time to find the piece and then we're going to sing that piece and then we were like hey what why is this so you know stressed right now yeah, all of a sudden and that was when michael said the concert starts in 15 minutes <laughs> <laughs> and we all went, so we didn't rehearse anything. We well, didn't rehearse the solos. solos. Didn't, yeah, Michael it hadn't was, even looked at the accompaniment for, for some of them. Yeah, I mean, which is, again, it's a testament to how he's a fantastic he's player. He's a phenomenal sight reader. Um, but he, it was just... It was, and my favourite part was the fact that we were all stood in a line doing mm. the choir pieces, and they were like, we're now going to hear some solo items. And everyone was like, here we yeah. go. We don't know who it's going to be. Yeah. And those, the person that was chosen, everyone else then had to kind of just awkwardly shuffle off, but try and make it look like we knew <laughs> what we were doing. Yeah. Um, so we're doing this same concert again this year. Um, Which will be much better organised. Yes, I'm sure. Uh, we're also singing for the graduation ceremonies. Uh, next week which is an awkward one because we're a church well we're a chapel choir mm. um, so we sing well we sing church music some secular yeah. stuff but mostly church Most, music yeah mostly liturgical and uh, we were told not to sing any church music yeah which is mental it was it's such a shame because the pieces that we did went down so well you know we'd sang the hallelujah chorus which was as the kind of celebratory as people were walking close, out and yeah people were as they all finished it. It yeah great. and it was really fun um did we also do parry's i was glad for some of them we did that in Truro, yeah, yeah we did. and we also did the Dimittis. yeah and what did we do something else? Oh, we did you on the new day. Mm. We did it was King Singers. three most days, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, so we've been told this time that we're not allowed to sing anything churchy. Churchy, basically. which for a chapel choir <laughs> is a different. little bit hard. We actually still don't know what we're doing. No, so. I'm fairly sure. We, we, I think we're doing I Can Go the Distance. Oh, from Hercules. From Hercules. That yeah. is a banger. To um, be fair. And There's... I think I think Michael's arranged it. Oh really? Mm, I think oh so. well, if you um, if you weren't graduating already from the University of Exeter, be sure to graduate yeah, uh, next week. Banging tune. <laughs> but other than that, you know, there'll be there'll be loads more music that we're doing, and it's always really fun, especially when we go down to Truro. Um, oh, Truro Cathedral is absolutely lush. Um, it was the first cathedral to be built. Sorry, if you're not interested in choral music, we apologise, but this probably isn't the podcast. For you. <laughs> yeah, if you if you didn't like this, you wouldn't be listening to this episode. True, um, but yeah, it was the first cathedral to be founded in England for like. 500 years mm, it's, a, Vic that? it's a victorian talking? build isn't it mm. um, and you can tell that they, when they were building it it was built for its acoustic um, the sound yeah. in there is fantastic i actually went with um another choir that the budley salterton male voice choir um for which i'm the assistant musical director and michael is the director um we went down to the big international male voice choir festival uh about would it be maybe a, two months ago about that yeah um and we went down there and on one of the days uh, our venue was Turo cathedral so not only getting to sing there again but also for me to conduct in that building was really special i love it down there i mean i remember in particular when you uh, in the holson at Dimittis, there's lovely tennis solo which dan does mm -hmm. and we were used to singing this in the great hall of the university which isn't really built with acoustics in mind no um so it's quite dead when you sing something it kind of just goes into yeah. the building um whereas your solo traveled down the actually i could probably find out how it's got about a seven second ring so you can you can as soon as you stop singing and you you wait and listen to the echo, it rings out for about seven to eight seconds, which is awesome sounding. And for really impressive choral music like we were doing, you know, um, 
Hallelujah Chorus from The Messiah by Handel and Holst and Demitis, as we've spoken mm. about, and Parry's I Was Glad with, and it's got a fantastic organ. I was just reading this on the wiki. It's a Father Willis, which was the mm-hmm. same as in the Royal Albert Hall and in yeah. my old college. Yeah. And it's um, regarded as one of the finest instruments in the country, which, to be fair, we were basically, when we rehearsed, we were like, what else can we do? Mm. Like, what can we just sing whilst we're in this building? We were also organ. very lucky in having one of the finest organists to, in the country oh, to play. What a man. Uh, the man, the legend himself, David Davis. The most Welsh-sounding name. Not the, um, <laughs> not the Brexit ambassador. Yeah, but, a different person. Yeah, um, There's amazing. two interesting things, actually, about Truro, looking mm. at the wiki. Um, it was the first English cathedral to be built on a new site uh, when it was built in 1876. Uh, oh, no, it was, it was built between, starting in 1880, um, since Salisbury Cathedral in 1220. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that is a long time. And um, it's on one of only three cathedrals in the UK with three spires, mm. which is kind of fitting, I guess. Yeah. Because I, I was reading somewhere that it used to have, they used to, was it maybe Canterbury? Or, we, sorry, I keep getting distracted because I'm fairly sure we're getting power surges in, throughout the house. The it's not a power surge, it's a hot flush. The right. house is, well, actually it's probably not old enough to have a hot flush. I mean, it's probably not, it's doing quite well. It might be the, it might be the, the thing from the uh, Stranger Things, uh, trying to communicate. Oh yeah, the upside down. Yes, which is kind of, season two's coming soon. Mm-hmm. As, along with um, the next season of Game of Thrones. God. Very excited. Yeah, really, really good. And we've just had Spider-Man Homecoming, of course. Or Spooderman. Spooderman. Which Homecoming. we still need to go and see. I haven't um, seen we, it yet. We do do film reviews on Spongy and Electric, mm. uh, the YouTube channel, if you're not listening to it on the YouTube channel. Mm. Um, and we're also going to be doing Dunkirk. Yes. Which we're both looking forward to, because you're expecting Harry Styles will actually do something I think he'll good. be quite good, from what I've seen in the trailers. He's got... I think it, it helps a lot with... Because he's English and he's brought up with having quite a good sense of kind of um, humour through comic timing, Mm. that lends itself to, as far as your kind of on-screen presence is concerned, you you know how to pace things, which is such a big difference. You know, like, that's the primary difference between British humour and American humour, I think. I think it's also going to be really interesting because Dunkirk, looking at all of the advertising for it, Mm. is aimed... Well... Let me put it like this. The font is the same as the Inception font. Mm. It is a handsome score. It is quite grey. Kenneth Branagh's got a prominent role in it. it is, it's appealing to a relatively mature but mainstream male market. I think mm. it's pretty fair to say. Yeah. So I find it's quite nice that they didn't cast Harry Styles to reach out to another demographic because mm. it's clearly not going for the young teenage girl ticket sales. Yeah. Um, they've actually selected him presumably because they think he'll do a good yeah, job. Presum- yeah, presumably he auditioned and he was really good. So. Unlike, for example, how in the Star Wars prequels, Samuel L. Jackson was cast as Mace Windu mm. pretty much just to try and get black people into the audience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, but- he would have said that he wants to invo- be involved in the film and because he's Samuel L. Jackson. You can't say no. No. It's like the story about his, his uh, lightsaber. Oh, yeah. What well, the fact that he made it purple just because he wanted it to be purple. Yeah. And they were saying kind of like, well, it doesn't really make sense in terms of the law. And he's like, no, I want a purple one. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay. All well, right. but George then walked away and was like, oh, well, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> he, can't, he can't open his mouth very, very no. wide. That's no. why. Oh, actually, have you ever seen that? Have you seen the picture of George Lucas without facial hair? No. Oh, Google it. It's, Is it good? It's It's really weird. George Lucas. George Lucas, no hair. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I know, right? He looks like a vole. Or some kind of like water rodent. He looks a bit like Timothy Sport, I think. Yeah, or um Matt Lucas. Yeah? Well I think that's the not having hair thing. Mm. But yeah, wow. for those of you who haven't seen this, uh, Yeah, look that def- up. That's definitely funny. look that up because it's Pretty weird. It's also. Oh no, that's who he looks like. He looks like um, Doctor Eggman from the Sonic. Look, they just. <laughs> oh yeah, they've yeah, put, yeah, um... yeah. I feel like I'm looking at the same one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's glorious. It's also another great one. Is uh, celebrities without eyebrows? Oh yeah, yeah. Or the the one which is the Will Smith one with the really small mouth and eyes. Oh, Will Smith. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, we're getting we're getting dangerously close to meme territory here. Oh, don't worry. Well, that well, memes have some inherent worth, and I think this podcast will always stay somewhat clear of that birth. Mm, thank of God. Actually, educate people. Oh God, I'm just looking at a picture of Benedict Cumberbatch without eyebrows, and it's the weirdest thing. It's also like that photo of um, Bear Grylls when he had that allergic reaction, it like and he turns into Benedict Cumberbatch. Humberdink Cumbersnatch. A band snatch, uh, cabbage patch. Yeah. Uh, very literative name. Yeah. <laughs> 
Actually, no, Google Google celebrities without eyebrows as well. That's another one for you to do at home. Right. Uh, because if you do that, you also get a charming picture of um, Ellen without teeth. Really? Or eyebrows. And it's like uh, Maggie Smith. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, the interactive wow, podcast that's... game you can play at home. That's terrifying. This is amazing. Uh, some of this is nightmare fuel. It also um, is how Brad Dourif, when he played Green of Wormtone in Lord of the Rings, one of the ways he looked so creepy is that he shaved his eyebrows for it. No, uh, really? Yeah. You don't notice yeah. it until it's pointed out. You're like, oh, ooh. Mm. It's really weird. Because I, yeah. um, I was watching a compilation of things from Dune. I forgot that he was in Dune. Um, I don't think I've seen Dune. Uh, it's one I saw when I was a kid. I had, it was like one of those DVDs that came oh, free with wasn't papers. Out, probably wasn't born. Well, it was out. It was. It's like an eighties film. Oh, okay. Um. But yeah, do you remember when papers used to give out DVDs? Oh yeah, you used uh, to get them in um, uh, cereal boxes too. I remember collecting the horrible histories CDs uh, um, that came in like Kellogg's. I don't know something other like cornflakes or something. <laughs> and I had to I used to keep them in a little kind of. Um, oh, you had like the the, the library. Yeah, except my yeah. one was a Hogwarts themed. Um, CD kind of library it was amazing I'm ju- definitely choosing to believe that that's a Hogwarts themed CD library yeah. like it's a very sort of low brow yeah, yeah. a very lewd kind of, kind of a compendium of various things in the Hogwarts library that uh, the librarians confiscated <laughs> oh, no, that's the CDs. lewd library yeah I suppose now it's all QR codes isn't it Does, has anyone ever scanned a QR code have you ever scanned one um yes yeah, I, I guess like for getting into Unit one, <laughs> you've got a ticket, of, of, and a, so you, for, you, for those that aren't local to Exeter, Unit one is arena. really the main arena. Sorry, um, it's the um, kind of the main club that we have. We have several, but that's probably the most highbrow, which is saying a lot. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you ever go in there, you have to print print off your tickets for whichever QR code. But other than that, I don't think so. The, 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 yeah, I don't think they've really found a, a use. I mean, I remember we once at St Peter's we had business cards for open days. Which was like, oh, scan this QR code to be taken to the YouTube channel, mm. and you know you can watch videos um, about the college. I don't think anybody ever scanned it. No, they're kind of gone like, in now, a way. Aren't kind they? of, I guess, NFC is like the new version of that. NFC, near field communication. No idea what you're on about. Um, it's like what my ATD has. So I recently got a Canon ATD. Sorry, I looked at the microphone then as if like I was addressing Dan. I was like, oh no, this is for the audience. So yeah. I turned to the microphone. Uh, I'm just looking blankly. blankly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's um, your phone will have a sensor in it and. Uh, an NFC uh, tag is like, it's, it's basically a small bit of electronics that you put your phone next to it and it makes a near field connection, like a Wi-Fi connection. Right. Um, so for my my Canon camera, um, if I touch my phone to the NFC bit of it, it will launch the Canon camera app and I can transfer photos to my phone without using a cable or anything. Oh, uh, really? Um, and you see it like in bus so it's stations. Like a, it's like a faster, more effective Bluetooth almost. Yeah, and it's like specific to one device. So you like tap it and it mm. could, it's not like, um, it's not as protected. Um, I, th- I don't even think you need to set some of them up. It's just like a, a tap and it immediately goes on. But yeah, because right. like certain bus stations have them in the UK at least. Oh, really? Um, I'm not, I think it might be for like the, whatever advert is on, you tap your phone on it and you get oh, information. I see. No, I don't think I've come across one of those. It's not something I've used until this camera. What a time to be alive. I know, Exciting. moon pie. Mm. You know? Actually, that's the thing. There was um, a uh, a poll mm. on Twitter. It was like um, a tournament to decide the best. There was a poll best. or there was a poll? It was, a, it was called Stanislav. Right. And, uh, no. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, no, uh, it was uh, a, a poll. A poll um, to... <laughs> Sorry. I'm not, I'm not... No, you're just saying a different word. <laughs> poll. 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 Yeah, poll. Does it have an E? There, there was a poll. Yeah. Um, which was to decide the best Simpsons episode. And it was like um, a tournament. So mm. there were four episodes at each, like, group. Mm. And then you had to, like, being narrow, had to narrow it down. And I was like, oh, no, I just really want to watch Retro Simpsons. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do. When I, I'm going to treat myself. When I hand in, I'm going to watch every episode of The Simpsons from season three to season nine inclusive so, yeah just because we watched a treehouse of horror randomly the other day yeah which lived hadn't good. seen yeah that's crazy that's um, crazy and yeah oh god that was the best run of television yeah like probably and correct me if i'm wrong do send us an email if you disagree with this but i think simpsons three to nine was the best run of any tv show ever uh, the writing was just they so... were brilliant it was clever yeah and it's it's so consistently good mm. it's not like oh there's that one episode that you had to watch every like you know the rank of episodes mm. one after the other it was just and always current too. There was always something that was vaguely topical. And well, brilliant. speaking of speaking of current, uh, that takes us neatly back to uh, Gary S. May, 
who of course works in electrical engineering. Yes. Of see, course. Ah, there we see, go. Look, full it was, circle. It was all planned all yeah. along. It was tenuous, but I kind of like it. I think I was good. Thank that you. Was good. Uh, um, so what have we learned about Gary S. May? Seeing as I'm the one with the article, I'm cheating if I summarise it. Um, we've learned that he's the dean yep. of Exeter Cathedral. Yes. And <laughs> no, yep. he's, he's the dean, dean. Which was the university? Berkeley. It was, uh, oh, no, Georgia he went Tech. To he went to he went to Berkeley. He's the dean of Georgia Tech. Ah. Um, Georgia Tech's College of Engineering. He wears a very he he's quite trim and he wears a good suit. Yep. Apparently. Check the article yourself if you don't believe me. Mm. Um. We then somehow got on to Transylvania. Uh, oh, because you were asking whether it was close to Georgia. Oh yeah, because it was in, in Georgia and we were talking about slavery. Yeah. We got very deep very quickly. Yeah, we spoke about our concert in Woodbury. We, gosh, I think this might be a new record for how how rambly this one how is. How rambly this one was, yeah. I mean, we do we do the rambling because this is just what we're like in real life. Yeah, this um, is how we talk. This is never going to be a hyper concentrated podcast. No. Oh, we were um, we were attacked by a police helicopter midway through the show. Um, power yep. surges throughout the house. It's been quite an exciting one. Today. I think that might have been Gary. He was he was flicking the switch yeah. in his office yeah, in, yeah. in Georgia. Well, if anyone can, yeah. Gary can. The Candyman can. The Candyman can. <laughs> That's all for this week's episode. Don't forget to subscribe to us on your podcasting service of choice. You can like us on Facebook. And if you'd like to see our faces, check out our YouTube channel, Spongy and Electric. If you enjoy the show, you can leave us a review and a rating on your podcasting service of choice, which we'd encourage you to do. iTunes is particularly useful. Transylvanian travel recommendations and other thoughts on the show can be sent to us at spongyandelectric at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Join us again for another tumble down the wiki rabbit hole. And we'll we'll see see you next next time. People don't seem to mind the the length, though. No. But this, in a way, is like testing the water. People don't seem to mind the length. Length. Woof.